Hello everyone and welcome to the Selenium with Python series. This is our sixth session on this one and in this particular tutorial we will learn about the elements and locators in Selenium. So let's begin. When you are working with the Selenium automation, you will hear two terms very frequently. One is known as elements and other is known as the locators. Now what are the elements and what are the locators? So in the context of Selenium, whenever we talk about the elements, so we are actually talking about the HTML well elements. Okay. So when you talk about the HTML elements on the web page, so this is the web page right now. So this is our demo on a HRM website and this is the HTML web page and here we have a different elements. So when we are saying elements, we are talking about the HTML elements. Now what are the HTML elements? So we are actually talking about anything such as buttons, text fields, links, radio options, check boxes and so on. So whatever where we can interact are known as the HTML elements. Now, the, the second term we will talk about here is about the locators. Now, what are the locators basically? So we know that this is a field. This is an element, which is basically an HTML element. Okay. Again, this is an element. This is an element. Okay. Now, in order to interact with these ones, we need to find these elements first using this script. Okay. So locators are basically mechanism or the techniques we will use to identify and locate these web elements. So if I need to locate, so this is a web element. Okay. This is a text field in order to work with this one, in order to interact with this one, in order to provide some text, because it's a text field, in order to provide some text in this particular field, I need to locate this one first. Then I will be interacting with this particular element. So locators will help you to identify these web elements. Okay. And when we talk about the Selenium itself, so Selenium provides various type of locators which target specific elements. And the choice of locator depends on the attributes and the structure of the HTML code. Okay. So when we talk about the attributes, so if I go here, right click here, inspect here. So you see that this is the input field. And this class name placeholder, these are the attributes with the values. Okay. So in order to work with the automation, what we need to do is that we need to identify these web elements uniquely. Uniquely means that means, for example, here, if we try to find a uh, input field here. Okay. So here two input fields, right? So if I ask Selim script, that I need an input field. So it will be actually finding one more than one text field here, right? It will not be able to identify this one. But if I say that this, I need an input field and the input field name should be username, then it will be identifying it uniquely, right? So in Selenium, in order to locate these web elements, we have eight locators, basically the basic eight locators. So if I go uh, to my page, I'm here. So this was our very basic and the first script, which we written in our first tutorial. So here, if I go here and write browser, browser dot. So find element, we have a method from the web driver interface which is find element, it will able to find the element. And now what we need to do is that we need to tell how to find this one. And as we just learned that locators are the techniques used to identify these web elements. So we will be saying that by dot. So you see that we can identify the web element using ID, XPath, CSS selector, name, tag name, class name, link text and partial link text. So these are total eight locators through which we can locate these web elements. Okay. So now when we talk about these things like ID, XPath, CSS selector. So basically the ID is, you know, see on, on the top, right? And this is the fastest locator. So if you find the attribute ID, in the HTML field, then you should go with the ID. Okay. 
So we are basically talk, talking about if I go here and inspect here. So basically, this particular feed doesn't have the ID. But in case if there is ID available, so we should go with the ID. So for ID example, let me go here and go to this very famous application, Internet Hinoka app. Let me go here and let me go to some like checkboxes here. And if I go here and inspect these checkboxes, so here you see that we have a form with the ID called checkboxes, right? So ID again here is basically a unique and it should be unique, okay? So in this case, I will be using the ID instead of going with the name, XPath or other things, okay? Now, if I go here and when we talk about ID, so using the unique ID attribute, again, these are the attribute. This is the tag, tag with, starts from here, like just like a HTML, okay, this is a HTML tag, this is a head tag, this is a body, this is a div. So we need tag, in HTML we have tags, then we have attribute and their values. Now, when we talk about ID, so we are talking about the ID attribute. So here, this is ID is the attribute here. Okay. Similarly, the name here is an attribute here. Okay. Then if we talk about the class, so again, we will be locating the element using a class. And when we talk about the class name here, basically we are referring to the CSS class name. So this is basically a CSS class name. Okay. So this is a class and this is an attribute. And the, this is a value of attribute. And this attribute is basically a CSS value, CSS class name. Okay. Then we can locate these elements by their HTML tag name. So here the tag is input. I can find this element or locate this element using this tag name as well. So tag name already starts with this less than sign. So this is a tag. And here this div is a tag. Okay. Then we have this BR is a tag, form is a tag. So these all that are known as HTML tags here. Okay. Then we have a partial link text. So if I go here and let me show you here. So we, we covered ID. We, co we know that the tag name, we know the class name. Now uh, we are talking about the partial link text. So we will be finding the links. We can find the links by a portion of their visible text portion not the complete text so let me give you an example here so here uh, this is a link basically and if i go here and click on this one so basically this is a uh, forget it's basically a link here. Go here so no this this orange asharam so this is a link here and here slash sorry this is the sign of uh, the lesson sign so here the tag is anchor tag and it contains a link, right? When it contains a link, this means it's a link. So I can identify this link using the portion of this visible text. So visible text is orange hrm, comma inc. So I can say that orange, I need to find a link which has a text as orange, for example. So it should, if it is uniquely identifying this one, then we will be using this one as we will find some other way. Okay. Then we have a link text. So link text is basically, you know, a complete text finding the links by their visible text. So visible text is on HRM, comma, INC, right? And then we have a CSS selector and then we have the XPath. So when you are unable to find the element using the ID name, uh, you know, the link tags, partial link tags, class name, tag name. Okay, then you should go with the XPath and the CSS. So basically, when we talk about CSS here, so this means that we are referring that we, are, we will be using the CSS selectors to target the elements. So we will be using the CSS of this element to find this one. Okay, and in simple way, in similar way, we will be using the X path. So X path is basically a XML path. And if I go here, you will see that it's a tree, tree like a structure. Okay. So this is a body inside body. We have a style, right? So it's inside a div. We have another div. 
then narrative, then form, and so on. So this is a tree structure. So basically, uh, technically, we, we will call it as an XML path, right? So XML path, uh, where we'll be using a path of this element, using a tree. Okay, we will see that. We will say that, okay, this is a path. So you need to go from here and traverse here and go to this path. So this is the one way. The second way is that we can refer the direct path of this particular element. Again, this is also be known as X path. So there are two X paths available. So one is absolute X path, the other is relative X path. So X, when we talk about absolute, so it will traverse from top of it. So it will go from head, body, dev, 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 dev. So it will go through each node here basically. You know, let's suppose if we want to find this image, so it, it will contain this complete path here. This is known as, known as absolute path. And when we talk about the relative X path, so it will directly go to this path here. Okay. So we will be looking into this relative X path and the absolute X path in the upcoming sessions. Now we know what are the elements. Now we know that what are the locators. Okay. So then how automation works? So let's, uh, let me open up paint here. And now we know that the, we have elements, which are basically HTML elements. Okay. And like we have check boxes, we have links, we have text fields, and uh, we will be identifying this using the locators. So we have different locators available in the Selenium. So in locators, we have ID, we can use name. We can use class name, we can use uh, CSS selector, we can use XPath, we can uh, use link uh, text, we can use partial, partial link text. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm missing one here. So basically ID name. So the one more is basically a tag name here. So these are the elements. We'll find these elements using these uh, locators here basically. And once we use this one, now the third thing is this, this thing is basically, you know, performing or interaction with the element. We identified these elements using these locators. Now third is interaction. Okay. So what kind of interaction? For example, if it is a text field, so we will be, uh, you know, typing something in that particular field. If there is a checkbox, so we, we might be, you know, clicking on the check or checking the checkbox, checking the, the box. Okay, so if there is a link, so clicking on a link. And the final and the last thing is basically we have, once we have elements, we located those elements, we will be interacting with these elements. And finally, we will be using assertions here. So assertions will help you to verify the functionality. Okay, so for example, if I go here, go back here, for example, so uh, this is a button here, a login button here, inspect this one, so the tag name is button, and it has different attributes, and the text is basically a login, and now we need to verify this, that there should be a button with a text known as login, okay, so verify that there should be a button with a text and the text is login. So verifying the functionalities is again really important because we are just not automating. The purpose of automation is to verify the functionality, right? So th these are the four steps, elements, finding the elements, interacting with the elements and asserting those elements.
So that's how actually Selenium automation works. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you like our content, then do like, comment, share and subscribe our channel. Once again, thank you so much and see you in the next tutorial.